What's up guys? Today we're going to talk about the electrical system and car audio and how it all works together. Now most people think that it all starts here, but that's not how it works. It actually starts up here. Now, I could go back to the fuel tank and talk about how the, the engine gets uh, you know, fuel and turns that into mechanical energy, but we're going to skip that part because you can't do nothing about that. What you can do something about is this. So, all the power going to your amplifier comes from the alternator right here. And, uh, of course, it's stored in batteries. I got two of them up here and I got two more in the back. But, <clears throat> it has to come from here. The battery cannot create power. It can only store power. Now, if you're wanting to get power back to your amplifier, let's say you've got a 5,000 watt amplifier, that's going to take about 500 amps to drive it continuously. Well, most of your factory alternators only put out between 50 or 60 up to about 180 amps of, of power total and most likely uh, the one you have is somewhere around 120 amps and that also has to be shared with the car the car is going to pull about 50 to 60 percent of that just to run the vehicle and all the stuff on it so you've only got a small amount of amperage left over to be able to send to something extra with a high output alternator, uh, say a, a 300 amp alternator, if you had a 5,000 watt amp, you see you're still not getting 500 amps out of the alternator. Therein lies the problem. So that's where the batteries come in. But they cannot continuously provide power because there's no, they're not a source of power, they're storage. So here's how this works. You got a 300 amp alternator, and you got uh, plenty of storage as your stereo plays along your bass tracks playing boom 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 okay there's a pauses in between those those beats during that pause the alternator can put power into the battery and then whenever the the bass hits the battery and the alternator can send a combined effort to give you your 500 amps. <clears throat> so it would look something like this with my fingers. So, boom, boom, get it? Out, fill up, out, fill up. Now, there's some other elements involved in this. You've heard about your AGMs, your lithiums, your super caps. So, with uh, AGM, all right, and of course your, sub, your submerged lead acid too, uh, all those have their own positives and negatives. The uh, AGM has a fairly low internal resistance, uh, lower than your submerged lead acid. That allows for the power to be transferred into the battery from the alternator quickly and also for the power to be transferred out of the battery with the alternator to give you a combined hit. And the faster you can move power in and out of your storage device, the better it works with uh, handling those combined hits. For example, if you have a fairly slow and fairly high internal resistance uh, storage, you're not gonna be able to put that extra 200 amps of power back in here before that next base hit comes. And that'll cause your voltage to slowly drop as you jam. So that, so you gotta be able to have a low internal resistance. Now, to give you an idea what that looks like, a uh, submerged lead acid battery is pretty high internal resistance. AGM is much lower. AGM is your best bet for your money, but it's also very heavy. Uh, then you have lithium, and there's a bunch of different chemistries for lithium, but they all have one thing in common. 
they all have a really low internal resistance and a really high amount of output instantaneously. Then beyond lithium, you got your supercaps. Supercaps have basically no internal resistance and they can put out all their power instantly, just right now. So they're really, really good at handling, utilizing that downtime whenever the base ain't hitting to allow the alternator to store power in them for that next shared hit. So given that, the next element of that is wiring. You guys have been looking at it. This is my ground. This is, a, this is one. My, my, and I'm getting ready to upgrade all this stuff. I've actually got a 300 amp alternator in here right now, but I'm getting ready to add a 370 and a dual bracket. It's going to get crazy. But the point is, this is your power wire. So you need a big power wire going into your system to feed that power to that battery. And it has to be able to feed a lot of power very, very quickly into your batteries. And I say batteries, that means batteries, lithium doesn't matter capacitors all the same thing it needs to be able to shove hundreds of amps into your storage very very quickly and also get that out to your amplifier very very quickly uh, so you need big heavy wires this is oxygen free copper which is all that I have in my entire system I do not run uh, copper clad aluminum because it is crap so <clears throat> You get your power out, you got your battery in tandem with your alternators, you got plenty of wire to move power back and forth between the two and to get it back to your amplifier. Now let's go back. Yeah. We started back here earlier. So then I've got two more batteries back here, as you can see down here, and a big old bus bars. And then uh, that power, that wire. It's sending power. This is power and ground going into my my, my amplifier. I've got two runs of each. Uh, that amplifier could probably use four runs of each, but that's my little four channel right there, the gold one. I'm using that for my four channel. That one over there isn't even hooked up right now. But <clears throat> we're back here at the uh, subwoofer area. Now I'm going to cover another area of this whole equation. So what this device right here is is an amplifier but more importantly what this is is a power inverter if you guys are familiar with the thing that you use in a big truck or in a motor home where you have batteries and the batteries uh, give you power at little outlets where you can plug in your electrical devices like a like a house plug okay that's an inverter what that does is it takes dc current from the battery and turns it into AC current and sends it to a outlet. That's exactly what this is. This is essentially a power inverter with a variable frequency controller and a whole lot of other crap. But the, base, the, the nuts and bolts are simple. You send DC power in, AC power comes out and goes to your speakers. If you, uh, an AC power has a variable wave so normally in your house it's 60 hertz if you live in the united states and that's your wave going up and down up and down up and down up and down that's 60 times per second it goes up and down that's a 60 hertz wave okay if you put a signal in from the stereo to tell this to play 60 hertz and you plug your hair dryer into the speaker outlets it would work if the amp is big enough i mean it's literally it's what it is the only thing they do is uh, your stereo sends a signal out your head unit to control the frequency at which those that uh, alternating current oscillates. And then that output, that output of alternating current goes straight into your subwoofers or your speakers all over, but your subwoofers and causes them to go up and down riding that same frequency that's coming out of the amplifier. If you sent direct current straight to your, your subwoofer, it would literally go boop and just stay there. And when you disconnected it, it would go back to the normal. Boop. That's all it would do. It wouldn't go up and down. It would just go boop. That's it. AC current. And yes, if you have a big enough amplifier and you, and you touch the speaker wires to your hand, it will shock the crap out of you. A uh, big amplifier can put out 70, 80 volts or bigger. You know, and yes, it's it, it will electrocute you. It will shock you. So... Then we go on to the subwoofer area. These guys 
that's going to be a whole other video. But I wanted you to understand what's going on with the electrical system and how that works. Because very few um, people out there actually explain the system. Direct current stored and generated coming back together through high capacity and high and, and low internal resistance batteries, high conductivity wires, getting power, constant power to that, to that amplifier. The amplifier turns that direct current into AC current, adjusts the frequency of it, sends it out to your speakers. And that's where the power comes from. Ultimately, the important thing is the alternator. Nobody wants to replace their alternator. I mean, you can go online, you can get these relatively cheap. I don't really suggest you do that. Um, because it's hit and miss and a lot of guys will just take your money what you're looking for is uh, some company like GP car audio a raggy make man singer you know uh, Chicago uh, one of these big name brands they're gonna give you consistent reliable equipment and also give you consistent reliable uh, customer service whenever there's issues so Everybody understand how that works? <laughs> I know it's a bit long-winded and most of you guys are like, duh. Well, you know, if you know what you know, you know what you know. Hopefully, maybe I gave you something to think about. If you guys enjoy my content and I do my best to make everybody happy and to give you the best thing I can give you. If you enjoy my content, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button and ring the bell and leave a comment. If you don't do nothing else, leave comments. I wanna hear about what you guys do. I wanna know what you think. Get a comment thing started in there. We can have a discussion and life will be good and awesome. Peace.